Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Coach Johnson's YouTube channel where we talk about the power raid, the air raid, offensive football, and just coaching in general. Um, today, I'm excited about the video that we're going to do, uh, taking a break from the X's and O's um, and talking scheme. Uh, today, we are going to talk about kind of an organizational thing that's big as either a head coach, offensive coordinator, um, and then you can even translate it to being a defense coordinator. And that's um, talking about what your install schedule looks like based on what your menu is for your offensive system. So for, for our offensive system, we're the power raid. Um, we're, we're kind of mixing um, a little bit of power downhill running game mixed with uh, the air raid and the passing concepts and, and mostly the philosophy. You know, so for us here in North Carolina, we get 10 days. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of walk through what our offensive menu and install looks like and then how I translate that to our 10 days of spring ball, then into what our summer schedule is. And for us, um, you know, anywhere I've gone, we'll go Monday through Thursday. So we break it down to the four days. And then when we go into our season, you get Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then Thursday is your, you know, your walkthrough and game prep for Friday night. So what I wanted to do is kind of talk about what our base philosophies are, what our run game package, quick game, drop back, screens, RPOs, and, and the things that we do and how we're able to install that and then how that carries over throughout the, the season. Um, so we're going to start off with what is your main kind of like philosophy or what do you do? So I really believe in kind of keeping it simple. Um, we have four main run game, which we have our inside zone, which we also will pair into our ISOs. Um, and then obviously we have some quarterback run in that. We have power, counter, and buck. Um, and so all that we have our main blocking, uh, you know, philosophy and, and our rules and then we have some checks on that, but nothing ever really changes when it comes to um, the up front. We try to keep the linemen super simple. They know their rules, um, but we do have a couple of tags that will, you know, change uh, what who they're blocking and then who's the read or what the quarterback is reading. Um, and then also our RPO tags. So those are our big four run uh, game categories. And then our quick game is we believe in stick snag. I put shallow cross as a quick game, kind of mixing it up there with mesh on the same day um, and then smash and when we talk about smash it's kind of I've kind of mixed that now into stick because um, I truly believe in finding what your team does uh, well and then how can you cut down on any type of you know fat you want to trim the fat from your playbook and, and we believe that we can get to smash in a bunch of different other ways and so we would rather you know spend a little bit more time on on stick and putting that as the Quarterbacks reads kind of in the same category. Um, and then when we go to our drop back, we have Y cross, we have Y and H sale, we have mesh, and we have, you know, three kind of categories for mesh. And then we have uh, four verts. Um, we've taken out taken out curl flat, um, just didn't feel like we called it enough. And there's other things that we've been able to get to kind of like in our snag and our stick game. And then with the front side of our, our cross, um, and then even our backside on cross and some of our, our sale, we can get to that. Um, but we would rather spend more time now on four verts because it's been very successful with us. Um, and then just kind of teaching the receivers some of the rules uh, that they can have for that. Uh, then we go into our screens. We believe in smoke, which is to our outside receiver. We have our bubble, which is to our slots, our arrow screen to our either one of our slots and can even be in motion to our outside receivers. And then tunnel, which we run our tunnel. A lot like Lincoln Ryland Air Raid, we've, you know, a lot of those guys, is, it's off of our GT. Um, and then we have our RPOs, which are stick. We have our glance, we have a pop route, and then we have our speed out. Um, so that is our main menu. If you see, it's all kind of the magic number of four. I believe that um, when you get down to it, if, if you guys aren't, if you kids aren't thinking, and you're able to just make a couple of tags, um, that doesn't change everything up for the quarterback, and but can also, you know, Tell them, hey, we want to take a shot on this, or um, you know, and if they if you have that communication where he knows what he's looking for. But all that, when it comes down to it, is you also want to keep everything super easy and uh, for your lineman up front. Um, so now we're going to kind of transition into what our spring install. So we get ten days here in North Carolina. So what I like to do is I like to take that menu and I like to spread it throughout ten days. And I, you know, and some people believe in going day one, day two, day three, like the air raid. And that's your three-day install. And then you just do that again and again and again. Well, I would rather go into complete detail and depth 
of our main run, our pass and all that, and spread it out three days in a row, and then kind of moving on. So an example of that is right here on day one, we're gonna go through our inside zone read and lock. And why we do inside zone first is it also helps with our pass pro. Um, we, uh, in our inside zone, we do a lot of, that's how we're gonna do our pass pro when it comes to taking care of the, um, the numbers and the angles and who the quarterback is hot off of and then how do, who the running back would get if we keep them in, that type of stuff. So the inside zone's very multiple for us. And like I said, it helps us with our um, pass pro. So we'll go inside zone read and lock versus an even man uh, front. Um, and then what you'll see on day two is we'll go inside zone read lock versus odd. And then day three is all of our ISO stuff. So our ISO, our dart, and our gut, um, which is something that we do a lot out of our 10 personnel, um, except for the ISO, obviously, we'll, um, we can do a cue out of 10 personnel, but then if we put in our, our sniffer or our wing. Um, so that's how we get our inside zone. We go three days with our inside zone package. Well, then we like to pair that also with our stick. So what we'll do is we'll go our Y and H stick, which are our most basic versions on day one. Day two will be our ways of getting to pretty much kind of getting to smash a little bit where we'll do our double stick and our slot fade. All right. So right there is that's four different. Um, that's one concept of four different ways. But for the quarterback, it's one read, just like when we go up to our run game, our inside zone read and lock. Is it's all inside zone, and then it's just like one small little tag that changes something. So as you can tell, as we can build on each um, on each other, and it's like building blocks. Um, and then day three is where we get into our shot plays um, off of stick because we've been really good with stick, and now what's great is it once again does not really change up the quarterback's read um, for us because it goes one two three. Okay, so then when it comes to our drop back, is then we have Y cross. All right, and we have three different ways of getting to Y cross. And as you can tell, we'll have our fade out, you know, our slot out, and then we'll have our sail version of Y cross. And we do all of this out of our three different, our three main formations, which are our pro. And then we have a bunch of different tags for our wing. Um, then we have our spread, which are two by two. And then we have tricks, which is our, our three by one. And then we have, um, you know, we use a lot of stacks. So we'll send then day two, we'll do some stacks. And then day three is our, different ways that we can get into um, trips. So that's our different tags. And what we do is now we can run all those things for those three days out of those formations. All right, and then what we're gonna do for our screen is smoke bubble. You'll see that we do that on day one and day three because um, we would just want to be able to run both of them and install super easy and then arrow will be day two. And our RPOs that we have is our stick glance smoke. And you'll see that each one of our RPOs get two days of spinning on that during spring ball um, and same with our screens. So that is our inside zone. So that's, that is what then when we go into our summer schedule, that will be our, our Monday. So that's going to be all the stuff that we would do on our Monday. So that's how we kind of correlate that. So our day one through three is going to go into our Monday and then a little bit of our Tuesday with the, the dart and gut because we have a pulling lineman, but then translating that all the way forward into the season. That's all of our Monday. So that is the category of plays, uh, the concepts and different tags that we're gonna put when we go on our Monday. That's all that our kids will run. So what I like about that is, okay, they come in on a Monday, they know what they're running. So that's Sunday night. Hey, just a reminder, go study You know your position, go study the different tags, go study your responsibilities and your rules up front. Um, and then you, you'll be ready to kind of come into uh, Monday. And then the best part is that goes all the way throughout the season that's what we're running on Monday. Does the defense might know what you're going to do? That's fine because it's going to help you get better. And then every week is obviously probably a different defense. Um, but you know, the kids now know they're in a routine. You know, it's one of those discipline things of, hey, Monday, we know what we're running. How can we get prepared so that coach doesn't have to go over anything and let me lock in and let me do a little bit of studying just for a little bit um, to make sure that I know what I'm going to be running on Monday. So then kind of going back into that. All right, so now we go into day four, five, and six, okay, is going to be now where we have our new set of paths. All right, so we'll, we'll continue to do ISO guard and, or ISO dart and gut because it has to do with pulling linemen, and now it's against an odd front. Well, it helps us because now the next couple of days are all a bunch of pulling linemen and all of our gap scheme. So, but it will start with our Y and H corner snag. 
we'll do that day four and five. Then we'll go into our drawback will be our sale. But for day four, we're going to focus on what we run out of our Y sale. And then day five is going to be our H sale. And now you go into what is our RPOs and our screens. Well, we're going to double up on arrow. Okay. And then we're going to double up on smoke and bubble. Well, Coach Johnson, why would you? Because now we're going to go to where we have our tight end with his hand in the dirt. Um, so now that gives you a little bit more of an 11 personnel type of look. Um, and now you're working a little bit different because we all know that against that odd, especially if it's a 3-3 three, three stack, what we like about that is we're going to put that hand in the dirt and we're going to um, make you now designate whether you're going to go towards our uh, towards our run heavy or you're going to go to where we're heavy on our, our pass. Um, and, it, and it makes the defense have to you know tell you what they're going to occupy and what's more important to them, um, whether run fitting or if they're going to be worried about coverages. So then when you see that we're running our power versus even power versus odd, okay, for those days, okay, here's the best part, all right, is now when you go into your summer schedule, Tuesday is our power with dart and gut, and then it's our snag, snag corner, our sail, our arrow, and our glance, stuff that we've already worked on. So now every Tuesday, that's what the kids can expect during the summer, and then when they go into the schedule, Okay, for the season, the only thing that now changes is now we would add count counter to that, which will be our next thing. Okay, so now we go into where we go into our counters. Okay, so our counter now is day seven and eight is going to be our GT um, and GH versus even, then our GT and GH versus odd. Now, we'll tell you what a little bit different is because I like to spend a lot more time on our shallow and mesh. So we spent two days... Um, with our sale and our snack. But now what I've really done, because I've realized as a coach with it comes to the quarterbacks and the receivers, the shallow cross and the mesh to work the specific and all the details that come in to make that play work, which is really expensive. But once your kids figure it out, it's very deadly on defenses and it kind of helps you with your man beaters. So we spend four days in the spring working mesh and shallow cross. And here's kind of why. So the first day we do our shallow cross, going to teach the inside shallow, um, which is going to be our, our Y and our H and what the rules are. Um, you can go take a look at my other, um, my other video about how we install shallow cross, but that day all I'm focus on for them is that inside guys is who's running the dig, how to run that dig properly and teaching the quarterback how to read that shallow and then coming down to our, our running back. Um, so that that's all that we focus on there. Well, then that's the most basic version, right? Well, then our most basic version of mesh and mesh switch, um, which if you take a look at uh, my mesh video and then uh, the part two of what mesh switch would be for us, it doesn't change for the quarterback's read and it's the most basic version. So now we're doing our most basic version of shallow cross and mesh on the same day. Okay, and then what's great about that is we can run out of all the formations that we've already talked about and now also these new tags. So... Now when you go to our summer schedule, you see that counter, and now you're on Wednesday is counter, shallow, mesh. And now you get into your tunnel. So now for all of Wednesday, guess what? Now they now know is shallow and mesh is something we're gonna run, and tunnel is what we're gonna run on our uh, Wednesday. We love to run um, tunnel kind of back-to-back -back days. Um, so where it says arrow, you know, we'll, we'll run that on because of, um, you know, off the power counter and just something that we like to do. And then tunnel, we like to spend our Wednesday is a very expensive day with, you know, buck, shallow mesh and tunnel. So we get a lot of time on to that where I didn't want to mix up and go double up on Tuesday for our screens. So now you'll see that it all translates to it from our spring day is, is these group of plays, the kids know what to expect and then it carries over into the summer. And then obviously when the season, you gotta cut it down from four days down to three and how we kind of cut that off is we spend less time really on going with anything to do with smash. And then our RPOs will actually double up because we do an RPO um, mesh sequence of our first 10 day or our first 10 where our running backs and quarterbacks are working on on their mesh and we're hitting RPOs, but we also work on our screens. Um, and so we go 10 minutes for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, where you see that when we go into our season schedule, we spent 10 minutes um, hitting tunnel and fade. Um, so it gives the guys a break 
when they're running that tunnel, boom, and then we'll go and we'll hit the fade. Um, and then Tuesday, we'll probably spend some time on our, our glance and our arrow. So what's great about that is, you know, is being able to work five minutes on that arrow, five minutes on that glance. You can get through a bunch of reps, bunch of more reps, bunch of reps, and then like on Monday, smoke, and then we hit our stick and speed out. And that stick is so fast that we get our reps really fast. And now we can work on that speed out because when we teach our stick, um, especially when it's on our man side beaters, we kind of teach them, you know, it's an option route, which is great because that kind of transfer into our speed out with that shuffle step. But now instead of that shuffle, if they see that somebody's over top of them, they're just going to run that speed out. And we'll also run that out of our outside receiver. So everybody gets those reps. So as you can tell, we spend a lot of time on screens and RPOs, that's when we, that's our first thing that we do throughout the day is we spend 10 minutes on that. Um, and then we'll go to our inside run or our team run and it's 15 minutes with our run game and our RPO and our screen. So if you add that up, that's 25 minutes working on that run, the screen and RPO. All right. And then that last 35 minutes is towards our pass pro and towards our quick game and our drop back. So that's kind of how we, and I'll get into how we do our schedule another video. But to finish up how we are talking about our spring, okay, you'll see. So inside a mesh, and now we go into day seven, is our outside shallow cross and teaching what, um, if shallow cross is called on your side to the outside, what you do as an inside so that you really work and know all those reps that day, that's all that you're focused on. And then we'll go into our mesh post wheel that day. And now you're starting to see we'll work on our tunnels. Um, and we're back to now running, since we've been spending three days on our kind of our base and then three days going into hand in the dirt tied in type look and now we're going to go back into spreading it out um and we'll go two by two and then we'll go into our trips okay so now day eight is now shallow cross out of trips which we know as coaches we'll call that either trail or drive but i don't do that for our, our guys i really try to make them focus on just knowing their tags um and we just call it shallow cross and then we get into our mesh rail so you've seen that's our three families of um, mesh and then we'll have a fourth one and then you'll see we'll work on tunnel again and now it's just the different trips tags and and working on bunch um, because you, it's really deadly out of our mesh rail and then in, introducing when we go into mesh traffic okay so now our last run game is we're going buck sweep versus an even look and then buck sweep versus an odd look so that's our last one so then that goes into our summer schedule that will be our thursday they know always going to run buck sweep on thursdays and then our season, buck sweep's always going to be on Wednesday. Wednesday, personally, is my favorite day because I love mesh and shallow cross and buck sweep. Um, so that's what we'll get into our Wednesday. And since we spent a lot of time on that, hopefully it's really refreshed for Friday. Um, and we also don't need a lot of contact. It's more of the little details for those days. So we try not to go super heavy on Wednesday. It's more of that mental reps, making sure that the fine details are taken care of. All right, so now going back into our spring install. Now we're going to our, our fourth thing when it comes to shallow and mesh. So one thing I'm doing this year with shallow cross I've never done is um, where we would run a lot of verts and then one guy is tagged for a shallow route and he's kind of delaying his, you know, he's delaying his, uh, his release and letting everybody run, run verts and everybody drop back. And the reason for that is we saw a lot of cover eight this past year and a lot of people bailing out where now it doesn't have to just be the running back as a check off. And now what you can kind of do is you can mix and match who's running that shallow for the check down for the quarterback and then replace him with the running back, either running a wheel or running that pipe route, um, which now if everybody, because of that slow release and the running back kind of chipping into release, and now you got two guys that are not coming out immediately and now they might be wide open because everybody's dropping. So it's really good in those situations. It's almost like a screen. Um, for when you're, if you're seeing a lot of drop eight or if you're uh, seeing any type of pressure, it's one of those things is now you have two hots off of that. Um, so that's something I'm going to be doing this year. And then we'll go into our mesh traffic, which is really big out of our bunch, which is why the day before that we installed it. Um, it's one of those that kind of talk about into the red zone um, and getting into those situations where you might see man. So those are some really good man beaters. And then you'll see pop and peak as our RPO because that's something we really like out of buck sweep because just like that outside zone, you're getting so much going horizontal, you can kind of hit somebody on that vertical stretch. Um, and then the, the power rate, we're really big on, you know, hitting people with a bunch of different formations, very simple on the concepts, trying to get the ball to a bunch of different people in a bunch of different ways. 
and then also that horizontal vertical displacement on the defense and straining them and that's what we feel like we're doing and we'll do this and then we'll introduce our empty tags um which is a lot of fun because it's moving the h around it's stacking people it's bunching people we can go quads um and then um we'll get into unbalanced stuff uh during the summer so that is our 10 day install and like i said then you get into our summer and the, the kids know that on Wednesday and Thursday, we're running a lot of our shallow mesh and along with our four verts. So we're spending two days on there. So you see that we're spending four in the spring, then it's two days during the summer, and then the season all that day Wednesday is that's what we're spending our time on. Um, and then what I like to say is during the summer, when we kind of hit into the middle of July and we got about you know two weeks trying to figure out what we're running well, if something's not running well, I cut it. All right, so... Um, that's something that we'll do is I start evaluating about halfway through July after we're done with one of our dead periods. And that's about three or four weeks of talking about a concept. If something's not working, the kids don't really like it a lot. I'll start cut, cutting the, and turning the fat off of that. Um, which, cause I'm trying to make sure that the kids understand what they're doing and something that works. You know, I'm very big on, you know, analysis and, um, you know, cost effectiveness and SWOT analysis and, trying to really evaluate what are, we're doing really well and what the kids like and what we're effective running. Um, so then we'll go into our season and then there's how we do that. So that's kind of the process that we'll take. And then once we start going into our fall schedule, I can trim the fat even more if I feel like something's just not working. Um, and if we only go in with, you know, let's say inside zone, you know, is only kind of a half and we're doing really good with our ISOs and power counter buck, then guess what? That's what we're going to focus a lot on. Um, whereas, you know, I feel like we're really good with the stick, but if there's a couple versions that just we aren't really good with it, then I'll cut it, and it's something that we're not worried about. Um, one last thing I would like to talk about when we go into our summer schedule is that's also where we'll kind of intro start introducing a little bit more of the motions, um, and we'll also try to put in kind of an unbalanced or a um, crazy formation each week, um, and that will be a tag. Um, and the reason why I like to do that is we will have, you know, a couple of plays, you know, not a full offense into a couple of our different formations. Um, but it, what it does is if we're starting to work on this every week and we review that every day, Monday through Thursday during the summer, boom, we could put in one crazy formation or an unbalanced formation each week. And if you do that, that lets you, that allows you to install, you know, five to six different tags or different um, formations that now you can use during the season um, because we've already done our base stuff, we've done our, our empties, and now we're talking about some quads or unbalanced type stuff that I've shown on videos. If you go take a look at the formations, um, you'll see I like to do a little bit of unbalanced. Um, we can do kind of a heavy package. So whatever based on what our personnel is. If we just have a bunch of receivers and, and not a lot of linemen, then obviously I probably won't do um, as much talk of but one type of heavy and then we'll do a bunch of different quads or empties um, and unbalanced stuff to try and find a way to get an edge and to, you know, be able to make the defense have to think over on film. Because I like to do, you know, an empty, a quad, and a funky formation each week. Um, and then even some unbalanced. Because now that means the defense has to has to take a look at that. So, you know, in here in Carolina, get the last two or three games of your opponent. Well, for us... They're going to, have to see all the different formation tags we do, and then they're going to have to see, you know, two or three unbalanced, two or three different empty looks, two or three different quads looks. And now that's something they're going to have to prepare for. And guess what? We're going to have something new for them that next week that they haven't seen. And whether they waste a timeout or we can get a quick three, four, five yards, or it's something that we can keep coming back to when we need yards, it's a way to make the defense think. And for us, it's going to be super simple because we'll make sure that we run plenty of reps on that because we've kept our concepts. Um, you know, to a minimum, and we're effective with it. We're getting a bunch of different reps in that, so our kids are going to know. We go wristbands that get introduced during spring ball, so they know how to read them, and we're able to play fast and do different tempos. So that's how we start from our offensive menu, going into our spring install, you know, those, through those 10 days, how we then cut that down into our four days during the summer, and then boom, into our, into our season schedule of three. So... I really hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's probably not as exciting as getting into X's and O's and, and game film, but I thought it was something that um, I've seen a lot of people get getting to that time of spring ball. And so I know a lot of people are talking about the organizational stuff and yeah, clinic season's kind of over. You kind of got to organize your thoughts um, and the details. So 
I really want to talk about how, you know, I use that air raid philosophy of the three day install, but I kind of do my, a little bit of a twist to make sure that we're putting in the details um, each day. And then one thing I'll do, my next video will probably be our practice plan, what we'll do and what, my philosophy on how we do practice. And then also how me as a coach and also going to be the offensive coordinator, how I'll have each day will be drawn up and, and we'll talk about, I'll have all the details from all the stuff I learned in the clinic season that, that the ways I already like to do it, but just some little details. Each day I'll have a whole sheet where I'm making sure that I'm hitting on those points because the kids nowadays want to know the ins and outs. They want to know the, the depth of your knowledge, which means you need to be able to transfer that knowledge to them and they want to know the why. Um, so those are the things that I'll probably talk about in the next video, but I really hope you enjoy this. Um, please hit me up on uh, my Twitter, which is at Coach M.M. Johnson. Um, DM me. Um, my email is CoachMitchJohnson at gmail.com. Hope you guys enjoy your Sunday. It's spring ball time around here in the coaching world, and it's almost summer ball, and it means that football is right around the corner. So make sure you're getting your kids ready, and let's have fun.